Good evening, viewers. Welcome to episode 38, Technology 101 for SMEs. We're having four for SMEs, but it's still just for SMEs. Welcome. This is another episode of COVIDcast JA. If you're joining us for the first time and you're wondering, where have I been all this time? How come I've missed 37 episodes? Well, you can just go back through our Facebook page. You'll find all the episodes there. But also, we encourage you to log into smallbusinessportal.com where you'll not only find all our past episodes, but you will have access to all the past memos that support each episode. You're asking yourself, what is this memo? Did you miss this week's memo, which is chock full of great information? If you've missed this week's memo, please email us at sme at psoj.org. So today we're talking about technology 101 for SMEs. I'm particularly interested in this topic. As we have recognized though, the SMEs that have been a little bit more technologically savvy and have set themselves up in a way that they've been able to pivot up with technology, they've been able to move their businesses online and reach their customers. We are in 2021 and 2020 propelled us into a technology revolution like we've never seen before. So things that we expected to have taken years to get accomplished, entire businesses moved from office spaces into homes because of lockdown, yeah? And all of this was done in a very short time. So technology is key right now to business survival. Technology is, is really the, the backbone of pivoting. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about various technology topics. And all of this is the build up to our conference on March 5th, 2021. And it is a virtual conference. And we're inviting you to register. Follow us on IG at PSOJ Financial Access JA. Follow us right now so you can keep informed. So what is this conference about? It's called Let's Go Digital, coming up on March 5th, 2021. And it is a public-private initiative to transform micro, small, and medium enterprises. The overall aim is to significantly increase Jamaican MSMEs digitized by the end of 2021. Some more of us will be digitized. So Jamaica is positioned to lead globally. I see Kenny Fairman. Kenny, welcome. Always glad to have you. So MSMEs will be positioned for digitization, and this will help to reduce business costs, improve engagement with customers and suppliers, create greater efficiency and improve workflow, improve product and service offerings, and increase employee skill set for the future. And I know a lot of you are saying to yourselves today, oh my goodness, where am I in all of this? I mean, I'm just panka pankering around on my laptop. And I want to understand, do I have the right laptop? Am I using the right technology? What is this cloud? And when I save things in the cloud, where is it? Up in the sky? Will I be able to retrieve them? How am I supposed to manage my business with technology? So we have two experts today, but we are actually going to start off. I see Jermaine Rudd, and he says, good evening from Antigua, one of my favorite Caribbean islands. Welcome, Jermaine. And Jermaine is Jermaine Selector J. Rod. So we are actually going to start today with our guest, Raquel Seville. And Raquel had actually done some initial data analysis. But before I get into that, let's, we're just going to welcome Raquel. And Raquel is CEO of, guess what, BI, BI Brains Caribbean, spelled B-R-A-I-N-Z. I love it. Raquel um, is an expert in business intelligence and analytics, and that's what her company does. They have over 10 years of experience working with Fortune 500 companies, solving business problems with data. Raquel loves working with data, uncovering new insights, and finding the unknown 
excites her. She has been working with massive volumes of structured and unstructured data for over a decade in fast-paced, complex, and demanding multinational telecoms companies with the harsh reality that 80%, guess what? 80% of corporate business intelligence projects fail. She is keen on strong data governance, business intelligence, user adoption, and having just the right tool, not just the right tools, but the right talent and processes to ensure maximum return and overall investment. So, Raquel, welcome to COVID Cast JA. <laughs> Hi, Rochelle. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. <laughs> so, welcome. And Thank happy you. new year. It's still happy new year. We're happy new yes. year all through 2020. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, happy new year to you too. <laughs> so the introduction, Raquel, I talked a little bit about your company, but can you give us a little bit more details on what your company does? Sure. So we are an MSME company as well, um, which is interesting being on this platform. So we focus a lot around data. We have a strong focus on data visualization because the key thing with data is if you're not using it to make decisions, if you're not presenting it in some way, then it's pretty much useless, right? If you're just gathering all this data and not doing any analytics on it, you're not, you know, it's not supporting some actionable decision, then there's no point in you storing it. Right. Um, so we focus yeah, man. because we just want to make sure we completely set the stage for everybody that's here. Yes. You know, nowadays when we talk about data, we say we're not mm -hmm. have data. Give me some Wi Fi. That's right. not the data that we're talking no, about. No, 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 no. That's not the data. So that we know which data we're talking about. All right. No problem. All right, so this is information that would be stored in company databases, whether it is customer information, information that would be stored um, on company websites, maybe transactions, maybe you buy certain things online. You know, the good example to think of is Amazon, right? Uh -huh. And you're purchasing things online, Amazon stores your data in a database. There is analytics, business intelligence, data science processes that are applied to that data so that they can in turn help you to you know get the best experience and they can of course increase their sales as well by utilizing the data that they already have on their customers okay so um in early in our let's go digital process for yes. planning this conference um your company actually did a survey about the state of digital transformation in jamaica and some of the challenges that smes are facing can you please share that information with us? <laughs> no problem, no problem. All right, so you're seeing some slides here and this is the aggregated data from the survey. There was roughly, about, I mean, I'd say about 150 um, MSMEs that were surveyed or that okay. filled out the survey. And uh, this question here, so I just picked a couple questions that I think would be useful. Um, and that would highlight, I think, the conversation that you're currently having and the conversation that you're having for this entire um, technology for S technology 101 for SMEs. So this one is around social media and asking companies if they have social media pages and accounts for their businesses. Mm -hmm. And of course, a big chunk of persons have Facebook, right? A lot mm -hmm. of persons have Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter, LinkedIn, Couple, couple companies saying they have YouTube. Interesting that some companies have actually said none of the above um, in terms of not selecting any of these platforms. And uh, um, around 3% of companies saying that they have utilized all of these platforms. And I don't think there was any responses for TikTok, which is actually a huge platform and a huge uh, aspect of media that persons can get into, right? But there was really no one that selected that platform as an MSME. Okay, and of the of the 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 hundred and about fifty response, one thirty five, right? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. eleven point one percent actually have none of the above. none of the above social media. No. Mm. no, very interesting. Very very interesting. All right, so moving on here, this other question that I picked out here, which speaks to what are the concerns that. MSMEs have about having a website because they were they were um, MSMEs that said they did not have a website. Yes. And the biggest um, 
detract or issue that MSMEs had is the cost. They're saying this is too expensive. More than half of the persons who responded said that, you know, it's too expensive to have a website. Training was another big thing that they don't actually have the skill sets. So, you know, whether it is to commission a website or to maintain it themselves or to even if they've commissioned it to keep it going, yeah. right? They don't have the skill sets or they don't have the training to do it. Um, persons who had specified other, either they said the website is under construction or they didn't get around to it, they're unsure, or you know, the ongoing maintenance is a deterrent, or the integration of payment methods is one of the issues that they have where they haven't actually gone through it having a website. Okay. You have about yes, you have about 70% of persons though that mention security, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a major concern for them. Um, eight percent mention the relevance, they don't think it is relevant for their business, and then access where persons may say they don't actually have access to whether it is the internet or infrastructure to actually build a website. Okay. Um, and viewers, if you are just joining us, we're speaking with Raquel Seville, who is CEO of BI Brains Caribbean, and she's actually taking us to just start our conversation around some data gathered on SME use of technology, because today's episode 38 and we're talking technology 101 for SMEs. So as we're going through, you can look to see where you fall in this conversation. Yes. So question 10 now was, what are the barriers that are preventing you from selling goods and services online? So mm -hmm. the, well, I guess the number one response would have been relevant. Person's not thinking it's relevant. Um, so, you know, it's not relevant for them to sell goods and services online. Probably doesn't apply to their business as from their perspective. But the persons who had specified other, they said that, you know, banking and payment solutions, which was a major, major thing. And I'm sure that will come up um, throughout this conversation and throughout all of these different episodes that you would have done. Banking and payment solutions is a major issue. It's not applicable to the products that they're selling um budget marketing they don't have the budget or the marketing to do it and also the restrictions you know they think that covid and the government is sort of restricting which i find that one interesting because you would think that covid would sort of be you know propel you to actually want to sell your goods and services online so that one was sort of interesting um other areas that came up costs some persons think it's too expensive um to you know set up the infrastructure to sell online training again the logistics they don't have a way of moving their products so we don't have sort of an end-to-end -end e commerce sort of facility where you know you can sell something and it gets to the customer in Timbuktu, wherever they are, right? Um, misfit, some persons think that their products are not suited to sell online, and then also access again is another one, is another issue that persons would have highlighted. And then the next question was around what are their concerns with having a digital strategy, right? Um, persons highlighted that digital strategy. What does that question? What is that question asking? What is a digital strategy? Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a question before this one that explained the digital strategy. Um, so at least they had an idea before answering the question. So it's really and truly you having a, you thinking of how you're gonna sell your goods and services, whatever products and services you're providing, in some sort of a digital way right and how that in, how that ties in with your customers your products your marketing everything that you're doing as a business what how are you going to use digital whatever digital assets whether it is the internet whether it is um social media how are you going to use that to enable your business and propel you forward right and there um the concerns about having a digital strategy is again training um, for persons who specified other, they mentioned that they don't have the time to do it. They don't have the funding. They don't have the necessary resources and skill set. And some persons say it's not applicable to their business, which is also interesting. Um, awareness, some persons say they have no idea what a digital strategy is, which is also interesting to know that's 18% of um, persons that um, identified that as an issue. And then also relevance, 10% of um, respondents say it's not relevant to their business. Okay. Yes. And I'm seeing some questions. We're getting to your questions. Please send all those questions in. <laughs> awesome. All right. And then here, no, question 18. It speaks to digital businesses that use technology to create new value in business models, customer experience, and the internal capabilities that support its core operations. So that is sort of a um, preface to say, what are your top drivers for transforming to a digital business? So the top driver 
um, based on the response is enhancing customer experience. That's what most persons selected. And they could have selected multiple responses, right? So that was a top one. Enhancing customer experience, streamlining operations was a second area, growth opportunities, um, enhancing products or services that they offer, responding to growing demand from customers, um, improving employees' experience, um, enhanced customer experience, accelerating their time to market, new standards, and also being proactive, right? But of course, the top, at least you could say the top three was that they want to enhance customer experience, streamline their operations, and being aware that there are definitely a lot of growth opportunities that are there as it relates to having a digital transformation strategy, or at least implementing and starting that path on digital transformation. And this question here you now speaks to what are some of the barriers that are preventing businesses from achieving digital maturity. And digital maturity means that digital is an embedded core strategy across all of your business functions, right? So whatever it is, whether it is processing, HR, marketing, whatever aspect. I know for small businesses, you may not necessarily have all of those functions so um, distinctly defined, right? But whatever it is, you have some sort of digital component across all the different functions. Mm -hmm. So the top, the top barrier that companies would have identified um, that sort of preventing them from achieving digital maturity is the cost of executing, right? Cost is a major concern. The right, having the right talent and staff, the right resources is another one that was a top, um, like I said, that's in the top two. The lack of time to implement, lack of knowledge. Some person said there are no barriers at all. Um, the high training costs, low priority. And then for the persons who selected other, they said that, you know, either they're currently seeking funding, that the government, that, you know, the different government policies and fees, the poor infrastructure to support e-commerce and payment, and also internet, an issue with internet services. So these are some of the barriers that they have identified. So the issue with internet services is the unavailability of internet or, or intermittent internet services. Was that the issue with the internet? The, well, they didn't specify, but I said good internet services. So I'm going to say intermittent. It seems more <laughs> linked to the intermittent issues and not necessarily, not so much so unavailability. All right. Yeah. And then this question here, um, question 23 it speaks to the business tools. And I think this is tying nicely with um, Neil's presentation that's coming up yeah. in terms of speaking about, you know, what business tools are you using as an SME? And a big chunk of persons, right? Because everybody wants to know that them money and them dollars, right? 66% of persons accounting software. Um, that is one of the top ones that persons are using in their business, right? A very small, well, 26% um, project management, 24% of persons say they aren't using anything at all, no business tools in, in, in their business. 13% um, using payroll software, 9% using HR software, and other persons specified using, um, there's a P3 accounting and Salesforce um, as other options that were not um, listed. Then question 26, what online training software do you use? YouTube. <laughs> YouTube taking 50% uh, as, a, as a number one response. Yes, yes. YouTube, number one training software that SMEs are using. Um, some persons say not relevant, they don't use anything. Some persons say they're using Coursera, 20% 20, 20 of persons. The persons who would have specified other, they mentioned that they have either an internal platform or they utilize workshops that are done on Zoom, maybe maybe even things like COVID, right? The COVID cast from PSOJ, right? Um, plural site as some of the other options. Um, okay. and yes, Linux Academy, et cetera. All right, so I just have these two slides remaining that speaks to one speaks to what specific needs must be fulfilled to facilitate your business going online? I thought these were interesting because if you sort of look at the, the mashup here, um, you'll see the ones that jump up, which are the ones that um, occur the most. So the ones that persons would have you know, typed in, um, the word cloud picks up those and makes them much bigger. They assign a bigger font to them. So that's pretty much what this um, graphic here is doing. So you'll see okay. the top five areas um, that persons need or want to be facilitated for them to go digital. And I guess maybe persons in the chat can either agree or disagree with this 
is cost and affordability and funding, all of that time to the money aspect of it. Um, expertise, training, knowledge assistance. Three is digital payments and banking. Four, internet connectivity and speed. And five, the ease, right? So these are the top five areas that persons say that, you know, these things, we need some sort of help around these areas so that we can actually go digital. Okay. Right. And then here now, in terms of the concerns, what are your concerns with going digital? And as you can see, these two were sort of open-ended free text um, sort of responses. And for here, the top five areas in terms of their concerns, one was security and cybersecurity. And you see that sort of pops out when you look at the words. Um, some person says none, they have no concerns or it's not applicable to them. Um, the third is cost that is expensive to go digital. Four is customers. They don't think their customers are actually ready ah. to go digital, which, are, which was, is very interesting, right? And then five would be the expertise or support or some sort of provider. Um, those are the concerns that they have that maybe they make that switch, build a website, and then they can't even you know, get the support or get whatever it is that they have, that they need to actually continue being digital. So these are just some of the responses that came from the SMEs, which is very interesting. Yeah. And uh, yes, lots of insights. Right. And what, so what we're seeing is cost is a major factor across right. the board. Right. Training um, SMEs understanding what technology is necessary for them that right, right. fit their mm -hmm. employees actually being able to use the technology. We're yes. seeing that a lot of training is YouTube training. Look at that. <laughs> yes. Online training. Um, and we're also noting that the use of social media, you know, a lot of persons still use Facebook, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people have assumed that TikTok and Instagram have completely right. over, right. but there's still a big um, chunk of business people, especially to that use Facebook. All right. So, wow, um, Raquel, thank you very much for this information. And for our viewers, this was very important. It was an important survey for us to conduct ahead of preparing for the conference so we could truly understand where the gaps are with SME use of technology, why there are these gaps, and put together a conference that is about enabling SMEs, pulling together technology packages, the stakeholders, the providers with the actual packages and walk people through that process. So yes. when you come to this conference, it is really not at all about you coming and saying I'm at a level, any level you're at, low level, mid level, high level. There will be presentations for you. See Brian Sterling saying, great presentation, BI Brains. The lead cover says, very informative. Thank you so much, Raquel, because this now leads us into answering some of the questions of what SMEs need, because today is Technology 101. Christopher, mm -hmm. Raquel, I see you online. <laughs> Thank you very much, Raquel. And Thank you. <laughs> yes, thanks for having me. All right. So we're now going to be joined by Neil Abrahams, who is CEO of Innovative Corporate Solutions. So Neil is a technologist. He has over 20 years of experience in the delivery of technology solutions in Jamaica. We're not going to hold it against him, but he is a past student of Jamaica College. So all the JC old boys I know are gathered tonight to cheer him on. 18 of his 20 years spent as a technologist have been spent have been in the delivery of IT solutions in varying roles such as manager technical services, project manager, CFO, COO, C, um, CEO, and CEO of one of the leading ICT infrastructure firms in the Caribbean, Innovative Corporate Solutions. He also serves as Vice President of Jamaica Information Technology Services Alliance, an alliance that represents IT firms in Jamaica. Um, not only did he graduate from the great Jamaica College, but he also holds an MBA in Business Management from University of New Orleans, and his BSc is from the Goodley, the University of the West Indies, Mona. So he has very practical experience in IT, and the great thing with Neil is he knows how to break things down with Technology 101. Hi, Neil. <laughs> Hi, good night. Thanks for having me. And I see you're in your JC blue. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'm very happy that, you know, when we started earlier this afternoon and we're looking at the various folks that are putting on the show that everybody had on blue, um, or most people had on blue. So I was feeling good about that. So, um, you know, thanks for mentioning the fact that I'm a college man. And I see Akeem Lawrence say, so why would you hold it against him, Jamaica College for life? <laughs> right. So welcome again, Neil. Um, I know our SMEs are very, very eager to hear from you. Um, when we were backstage earlier, we were talking about Apple products and the iPhone and the iPad and the excitement around them. And one of the comments you made is that it really isn't just about the device and the, the, the sexiness of a device. It's what right. you really need for your business. And that's what you're gonna be talking to us about today. Now, technology, just again, setting our foundation. Why is technology so important for SMEs? Well, let me start this way. Um, when I started in the industry 20 years ago, uh, a good technology strategy was about aligning your business strategy and with your technology strategy. So if you achieve that as an objective, then the thought process was that you you were doing well, right? Now, if you, for those of us that are a little older, um, if you think back to going into a bank 20 years ago, when you interface with a bank, you would go into the bank to try and get some money out, you'd interface with the teller, um, and the teller would be the one that would interface with the technology. You wouldn't interface directly with the technology, you'd interface with the teller. No, the technology could suck, but the teller would be a good, um, you know, very good at her job or very good at his job, and you could have a good experience regardless, right? Um, in the world that we live in today, um, most of us interact with the bank, the bank's technology directly. So whether that's on up on your phone, whether that's on the internet banking website, whether that's at a point of sale terminal when you're trying to do something, right? Um, this is how you interface with the, with the bank now. So nowadays, technology is not so much, the goal isn't so much to align your technology with your business strategy. The technology has become your business strategy and it's the way in which, the way in which people kind of um, are going to judge you. And you know immediately, you know, if you try and do a transaction and you can't get through to your bank's website or whatever, you're immediately frustrated. So. I say that to say that technology for a small business, medium business, micro business is just as important. Um, these entities have the same needs as a larger entity, but they just tend not to have as much resources. So we all have the same needs. The problem is that we have is, is with our budgets, right? So I think it's very, very important. And you know, um, when you lay this out, Neil, I know some people are watching and they're saying, that sounds all very nice, Neil, but I have a good phone. Right. And I usually have Wi-Fi that works. So right. what else do you really expect me to have? And I'm not a big business that I need what technology is my strategy. I'm making I'm making products or I am a sole practitioner. I mean, right. I have a laptop, I have a computer. What else would you expect me to get? So I think it's important for us to kind of go through the different types of, of businesses and what kind of technology um packages should you be starting with so say for example a sole practitioner who is a lawyer or an accountant or a doctor i mean what kind of technology you need more than your phone well so let's start off with a thought process that um you know we're going to look at technology from an appropriateness of fit right okay um, and and that's that's kind of how we're going to start off and and so in, in the various examples that you gave, um, you know, I think it would be very difficult for a lawyer to write a brief on their phone. I mean, maybe if they're very enterprising, they might be able to do that, right? Um, so, so they would definitely have need for some kind of a device, whether that device is a tablet, whether that device is a PC, um, mm -hmm. that would you know, have some kind of a good keyboard. Um, and from my perspective the device itself isn't so much important i think what we really need to be thinking about is the appropriateness of that device so i'd like to kind of set the stage from an individual let's say let's say we're going to start off from an individual being in business in some kind of a business um mm -hmm. and you know moving from there to multiple people coming together 
and multiple people um, joining forces to be in a business or somebody hiring multiple people, right? So from an individual's perspective, what you're really talking about is you'd have an appropriate end user device. Um, that might be a PC. Okay, good. Right. Okay. That, might, that might be a PC, that might be a laptop, that might be a tablet or one of these devices that kind of straddles the, the fence between both, right? Um, I think what's very important is that what we see when we're trying to help companies or individuals in business is that sometimes we see people um, go wrong where they're really trying to use products that are designed for home offices or for 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 individual use in a business setting. And I think that's where one of the places where you tend to start going down the wrong road. So you want to make sure that the, 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 the operating system um, is one that is appropriate for business. So you're going to talk about, you know, if it's Windows, you want to make sure it's Windows Windows um, Professional, Windows 10. You want to make sure that the operating system is supported. I think that's one of the most important things when you're starting out is to make sure that whatever operating system you're using is supported by the, 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 the manufacturer because if you're using a operating system that's no longer supported, like Windows 7 or Windows 8 that's out of support, then basically what happens is that you're no longer able to get patches for that operating system. Okay. And so you're basically using a device that basically has lots of holes in it. And when you take that device and you go on the internet, it's a huge surface area for attacks, right? So you want to make sure that you have you know, a supported operating system. You want to use an appropriate type of productivity suite, whether that is Google or whether that is um, Microsoft. Again, you want to make sure that, that it's win support, so it's current. Okay. You want to make sure that you have some kind of a functioning antivirus that's on that computer or on that device. Um, and, and then you go from there. So that's the bare minimum that you kind of want to have, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're going to want to, you're going to take that device. When you talk about even the operating system support, because, you know, um, not to out some of my SMEs, but sometimes people, you know, get their windows, they didn't exactly pay, the, you know, go through the group right. of, the, of a payment route and so for the, for right. the windows. And however they got it installed, they, it's windows from a long time ago. And right. They're saying to themselves, well, I don't really need to upgrade this Windows. But in fact, you should be um, you should be endeavoring to purchase the operating system so that you can get it upgraded. How, how do you get it upgraded? Right. So you you know what which one they're using. They're not even sure which one they're using. All right. So what you're referring to is cracked software, right? So basically you would borrow or get a key, well not get a key, but 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 basically get access to the software from somewhere. Um, that tends to not be, um, it's not valid and as a result of that you're not able to go to Microsoft and download the, the, the various patches for it, right? Um, so your technologist that you work with or you can go online and check on the Microsoft website um, and it can basically tell you what products are in support and out of support. So if you're, so you could actually have a PC or a laptop or some, or a machine that you bought many years ago, that's running Windows Seven and Windows Eight, and you bought that machine and you, you know it's not cracked software or anything, but it's just you're just running something that's no longer supported by Microsoft. Um, as a result of that, you're exposed because you can't get patches and you can't get updates for it, right? So it's not just about stolen or, or, or using illegal software. It's also making sure that the software that you're using is supported by the, the, by, by the manufacturer. OK. And, and before we go on, at what stage do you change your device? What stage should you be changing your computer? But you know, right. sometimes we, we do upgrades and stuff too. We change something, we fix a thing and stuff. And we've been going on for years. And I know different um, manufacturers will have different, you know, warranties. But w when do you know it's time to re to let go? <laughs> time to let go. Like, um, well, we, we do have, you know, relationships with these devices. So that's a good way of looking at it. Okay. so. Let's start from a desktop scenario, right? If you buy a, a, a desktop or a PC um, that's that's not mobile uh, and it's appropriately spec, then you can really think about a, a, a useful life of five to six years of that device, right? 
right? So provided provided you have bought something that has the appropriate specifications, um, then you should be able to, life should be good, right? Um, with, with laptops now, I would say probably every three to four years, um, and laptops tend to move around with you, and a lot of people don't really carry laptops in appropriate cases, and they kind of throw them down and they get beat up and stuff like that, and so they might have a tendency to fail. Um, not so much that the computer would stop working, but you might find that you know it starts you start having problems because of of basically how you have carried it. But I'd say probably three to four years you can look to think about um, trading in a machine from a laptop perspective. So um, as a as a when you're a solo um, entrepreneur, it's easier for you to probably drag out the process a little longer with the computer and you're taking care of it. Now you also mentioned that there are, you know, as you move up in business, so you may now be hiring persons. So you're probably adding devices to your inventory of, of equipment that your business has. Right. Um, as you're adding devices and as you're moving, you know, sometimes we, we started out with Dell and then somebody did sell us HP for cheap and we were all over the place. Um, in terms of our technology strategy, as the business grows and we're adding devices, computers, tablets, and so on, how should we be looking at, at that digital strategy? And, and even as we're thinking of software, how, how do we plan for that? Well, all right, so so let's let's kind of, that's a very complicated question that you asked a while ago. So let's see if we can break it into pieces, right? Yeah. So the first the first part of the question spoke to, um, you know, having different vendors within your environment, right? Um, so some would say that it no longer really matters what hardware that you use, as long as it's appropriately specified. Um, and I would say that you know, for somebody that's starting out in life, if you if you if you go with something from Lenovo, Dell, Apple, HP, any of these um, major brands, right? Uh, as long as it's a, a business class machine, um, yes. you should be you should be good to go. You know, when you when you get into some of the tier two vendors, um, you you you'd probably need a little bit more help in terms of making sure that machine is appropriate for you, right? So I wouldn't say it really matters um, which brand you go with some people swear by one or another mm -hmm. um but it's you know it, it it really is personal preference and how good a support ecosystem you have in whatever country that you're in so i think that was the first part of the question right yeah. um the second part of the question would be you no know, also you would also if you have 10 users or 20 users and you have gone and bought a computer from 10 different companies and something goes wrong with it, then the first thing you're going to have to do is figure out where did I get this from. So there, there is benefits to standardization, which is what your, what, which is what your question implied, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to be straight with you to say that it's not a requirement. But if you are standardized with one vendor or one partner, then it becomes easier when you're trying to get your warranty because you know exactly what to do and you know exactly where to go. But it's not an absolute requirement. Oh, okay. right. You, you can go in different ways, but just understand that, you know, the, the more the more prol proliferation of brands and devices is the more complicated you're making your support scenario. Right. Right? So so it's it's really, you know, that whole business adage where you want to kind of you kind of want to start with the end in mind. So if you can have some kind of a strategy up front, then it would be good. Um, and I would also say that if you can, you know, when you're purchasing your business class machines, if you can spring for machines that have longer warranties, like three years, that can actually save you as you move forward. So you know, if something fails, you don't have to go out of pocket. Yeah. Right? So even as you're saying that too, Neil, um, sometimes uh, as we are purchasing devices and so on, we are not necessarily paying attention to things like the warranty. Right. We're asking for a particular color. We want to know if it comes with a case, but we're not right. Questioning what is the what warranty is provided because what right. warranty is provided is important and the length of this warranty. Right. So a great a great analogy would be you know as if you decided you wanted to drive a car that there was no dealership for in Jamaica, Jamaica. Right. It could be a great car. It could be an amazing car. Right. So you know like overseas Volvos have been good cars for a long time, but 
there really hasn't been a strong Volvo dealership in Jamaica. So it means if you were driving a Volvo, then you're kind of on your own, right? So, you know, when you're buying whatever you're buying, it's really important to make sure that there is a good support ecosystem in place um, or whatever you're buying so that you're not in a scenario where you have to send something on a plane when it goes down, it can be fixed here in country. Um, and that will definitely help improve the uptime of your enterprise. Yeah, I see a comment here from Ryan Sterling. He says, as SMEs, we must remember that we are business offering various business services. We must have business applications that enable our success. Thank you for that comment, Ryan, which now takes me to my next question. When we're looking at um, technology solutions for MSMEs, what are some of the baseline technologies that are recommended? Right, so you would you'd really want to start off from whatever it is that you are doing, right? So, so for instance, you threw out some, some um, examples earlier, whether you're a, a doctor or a lawyer or something like this, right? So you would definitely want to use some kind of an application to support that particular thing that you're doing, right? And there, 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 there are tons of those things around um, that you would be able to find an appropriate one. So you'd need some kind of specific business application. Um, we'd also be taking a look at other things like, you know, making sure that you can sell or, or, or transact business or, you know, some kind of a point of sale system, some kind of a general ledger that, general ledger system or ERP system that can allow you to create invoices, do your financial statements, like your balance sheet and income statement. Um, you know, it's as you, as you hire staff, um, when you move from maybe having one or two people, then some kind of a payroll application would be important. Um, and then, you know, so as you move forward with your business and as the number of users that you have on the network grows or within your business grows, um, you would add applications for the business that you need. But those would be some of the, the, the most basic minimum that you'd want to have. Um, and then also, your, Raquel spoke about it earlier. You know, you would definitely want to be leveraging internet banking. You definitely would want to make sure that you have some kind of a web presence and social media presence um, and you know that those would be like the most basic technologies that any business person would want to have in place today okay but you, neil earlier as we went through the survey one of the key things that came up was that several of the msmes actually pointed to lack of training as right. one of the reasons why they have not gone into more technology um, say, so let's put you on the spot. We have a, a retail, um, somebody who sells nice dresses for ladies and mm -hmm. they have a brick and mortar store still, and they do, they've added now to their repertoire that you can get, come and curbside pick up and they will do delivery. And at this point, what they are operating with is the owner has a laptop and is running a spreadsheet, you know, with checking inventory. And most of their social media presence is Facebook and Instagram. And she receives orders over Instagram. So persons will DM an order for pickup or they'll come into the store. Now, when she's looking at it, she said to herself, listen, it's, it's COVID going to, I don't even know from day to day whether or not I will be able to keep this business going. If you're advising somebody as they're now looking into 2021 to say, what next? And should I be investing in technology? What would you be advising at this time? Well, the first thing I would do you know, as I would say that person is that I think that they're doing very well because a lot of what you spoke about would be exactly what we want to do, that those are people that are leveraging technology. So, you know, they have a spreadsheet and they're using that the best that they can to, to, to track their their sales. Um, they've heard about um, Instagram and these various social medias and, and they're, they're, they're leveraging it to do what they need to do. Um, they have found a very innovative way to to get orders from people via WhatsApp without having any cost associated with it other than the data connectivity. So I would say to them that they definitely are going down the right road and, and so that they should not look at it at things from um, a position of trepidation. Yeah, um, yeah. What we'd now say is that, okay, now that you have gotten this far now, um, 
how can we start to build on that? How can we make sure that you know it's more secure, it's more automated? How can we now make it more professional mm -hmm. to allow you to reach more people rather than looking at it as you know as a huge hurdle? We're just gonna enhance what you have and the technology that you're gonna choose is basically gonna be um, the facilitator for that. So, so I think that one, as a technologist, what's very important is that we're using technology to solve problems mm -hmm. or we're using technology to enable outcomes. If we're not doing one of those two things, then we're engaging in other things that not, aren't really helping us to, to achieve our objectives, right? So, so that's what I would say to that person. I'd be very encouraging to them. Um, and I, I, what I would say to them is that, you know, as the business grows, you want to think about having a technology budget, right? Um, and you want to think about, about the fact that we need to be investing in technology and not so much spending money in technology. When you make an investment, um, the goal is that you're making this investment now to, to, to reap something back from it after, right? Um, okay. and, and the example that you gave was perfect because the person invested in a smartphone and as a result of that, they can use WhatsApp. They invested mm -hmm. in a laptop, so as a result of that, they can run, micro, they can run Excel. So they, they, the, the investments that they have made thus far has allowed them to be successful. I wouldn't look on them in any way negative at all. Okay. So when they are, so somebody like that, if they are saying, I really need to go to another level, um, what, how, how do you take them to that other level? What is that other level? Right. So the other level would really be, um, you know, would be something very, very specific, right? So mm -hmm. um, it might be a situation where, you know, as you as you alluded to, they they have a way of using their Instagram page to show product, um, mm -hmm. and they have a price there, um, and then and then basically they, you know, somebody sends them an order via 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 WhatsApp. And then maybe they maybe you transfer money into their bank account, but they don't have a storefront, right? Um, they don't have an internet storefront either on Instagram or on or on Facebook or on the internet. So okay. maybe maybe a good place for them to look at would be okay. What are the things that I would need to do to allow me to actually do commerce mm -hmm. um, on my website? And I know there are some platforms that are being set up to facilitate that. There are some big platforms that are being put in place that you don't have to go and do it for yourself. You can basically join someone else's storefront. So I would encourage them to look into those things and say, okay, this is how you move forward and build upon what you have right now. Not throwing it away. You're not gonna tell the customers who have been sending you a WhatsApp that don't WhatsApp me anymore. I have a website. No, you're gonna take those orders the same way. But you, know, you would then now introduce them to this different distribution channel, which is very similar to what you spoke to earlier. You know, people that are doing curbside delivery now, that's basically, a, that's, that's, a, that's an adjunct to what they're doing before. They're not closing the store that they had before. They're just, they're just making it easy for you to, to, to reach them, you know, in a way that um, allows them to operate within the pandemic. Okay. So in terms then, because um, the, 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 this concept of business productivity tools, you know, we right. hear these terms being tossed around what are business productivity tools and what are some of the base business productivity tools that we should be even starting to look at and at what at so and, and i want to talk about it from a small business versus a medium business okay so what i would say would be that let us Let's, let's start off from the individual perspective, right? So from an individual's perspective, when you're talking about a product productivity tool, we'll be talking about some kind of a productivity suite, right? So whether that's Office from, from Microsoft, whether that's Office 365 or, or, or Google Suite um, from Google, then that would be a good example of productivity software that you could use, right? Um, to allow you to do spreadsheets, allow you to create documents, allow you to to have documents that once you've created these documents, if you're gonna do something else from someone else, you're not gonna go and type some type it over from scratch. You're basically going to, you know, build on the work that you have done, cut, paste, edit, and become more efficient. So when you're talking about productivity, that is the most basic form of productivity. Right? Um, and and as 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 the enterprise grows and, and you get into a scenario where you have multiple people working, then you really want to be in a place where that productivity suite is something that is 
common among across all the people and so that you can share information you're going to want to make sure that you have some kind of a centralized storage place whether that's on premise or in the cloud that mm -hmm. you can easily share documents um, and people really expect nowadays that if they ask you for something you should be able to give it to them no matter where you are if you're on the road and you, all you have is your phone the expectation is that you can just email them the document from the from your phone or send it via whatsapp message or whatever so from a productivity standpoint that's you know that's it like at a very very basic level when you get into an actual company scenario or an enterprise scenario or business scenario then all businesses would have processes um, and these are things that you do over and over again so for instance running payroll would be a process ordering lunch every day for the for the staff would be a process putting a purchase order would be a process you have lots of processes that are specific to whichever entity that you're in right now what technology allows you to do nowadays is to create workflows for these processes so you can use things like sharepoint which is built into office 365 and we can create workflows that allow us to take some of these manual processes or semi-manual processes that we have in our companies and we can automate them and that's like the beginning journey towards digitization that you guys are are, are talking about yes. so from a, from a technologist perspective what i tell people is that there's never been a better time than right now right uh, because we have more tools we have more devices more connectivity um, more things that are available to us than ever before at a much more reasonable cost. There was a time when I started in the industry that only large companies or companies could afford these things. Now almost anyone can. Yes. And while, we, while we've been talking, we've been conducting some polls. And as you talk about different devices, because something came in on my smartphone, does your business have an active website? And our viewers today, 54% said yes, and 46% said no. And our other question was, in which aspect of your business is technology most essential? 31% said accounting and payroll, which is what you pointed to. And that's actually what the survey said. Project management, 15%. Marketing and promotion, 38% and sales and customer service, 15%. So even the, the, these, these polls, these um, our live surveys are actually reflecting much of what the survey that Raquel meant, went through was saying, and in fact, um, just as you said, and I see Sh Aman Sharma says the best podcast. So the audience is, is, is enjoying this session with you. So, Neil, you know, as, as we're going through, because you have a way of, of simplifying so the technology does not seem so scary. And, you know, as, as our viewers, um, and let me just say, Mish Max says, as a freelancer, I felt it was important to invest in Dropbox. <laughs> Best decision ever. I have been at the beach and a client requests a document and I could send it just as you were saying. Now, um, with COVID lockdown, there was a period of time where there were work from home um, recommendations. So people work from home. And some businesses now, say a, 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 a small intermediate enterprise that had employees, um, probably had some devices also, and these employees had to now be working from home. So a lot of persons, you know, weren't necessarily prepared. We we're prepared for hurricanes, but not pandemics. Definitely. Um, so we're learning as we're going on. What are some of the key learnings that you would like to share with our SMEs for this work from home hybrid situation as some people still have persons working from home? What are some of the key things that you need to have in place? Well, let's start from saying that I don't really view it as a situation that is going to be specific to the pandemic. Um, I think we have most of us that run businesses have found that, you know, our staff is just as productive, if not more productive um, at home than they are at, at work. So, I mean, I think about 80 to 90 percent of our staff and we have about 70 people work from home now. 
Um, and, and so we have been able to win bids, deliver projects, manage projects, um, you know, and the only thing we have to go into the office to do right now is um, we have to go in to process payroll. That's it. Nothing else. Everything else can be done remotely. So any, what I would say is that anyone that does work that is based on your computer, right? And mm -hmm. I think there, there's a term in the industry called knowledge workers, right? Um, you basically manipulate data on a computer screen all day. Or, or that's a core part of your function. What we have found is that that work can be done pretty much from anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't need to come into an office for that, right? Um, we've also found we found that you know it's, there are certain positions that we we would have chosen desktop devices for, like for instance, my accounting team and key service team um, representatives you know, who would come into the work every day, we have found that if had we purchased laptops for those people the way the rest of the field staff had laptops, so we'd have been in a much better place. So we have basically made a decision that we're not, we're not going to be investing anymore in, in, um, in, in desktops. We're going to make sure that any, everyone is, is mobile and so that they can work from anywhere that they are, right? Um, we have found that having tools and suites like Office 365 from Microsoft and, and um, the ability to keep meetings with, with, with tools like Microsoft Teams or, or, or the various other um, flavors that are out there from the other vendors. Mm -hmm. um, those, have base, those basically allowed us, you know, within two days of the prime minister's request um, to have people work from home, within two days we're able to, to basically have 80% of the, the staff doing that. And we've been able to help our customers that way as well, because all of them that we were on the platforms we recommended can now work from home. So I would say that those tools are, are, are integral, right? Um, I think also what's very important in this new world is the quality of internet, right? Um, and making sure that, you know, as if you do have resources that are on your corporate network, and you're going to have a lot of people remoting into that corporate network, then having multiple connections to the internet and high speed connections to the internet, we have found that that's very important. So you really want to be in a situation where, you know, you don't want to be calling a customer and saying, well, flow is down or digital is down. And as a result of that, I can't, I can't help you for another four hours. That's not very professional. So, you know, even at home, if you're an executive or a high level, high value resource, um, I would say that you know having two connections to the internet, I think, is very very important. Uh, um, so those are some of the things that we have found, and and I think one of the things that's most important here in Jamaica, and it's not spoken about, is the whole the whole aspect of security, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's why we spoke about the valid software because that's like the most basic foundation of security. But making sure that you know you have if if, if you're at, if if you're at home or in your office, you have some kind of a firewall in place, um, making sure that you have valid antivirus. As you said, firewall. Because you know, sometimes yeah. we think we know what a firewall is. What is a firewall? All right, so a firewall is, a, is either a piece of software or, or a device that you would have, I, that you tend to have um, at the edge of your network. You know, in, in, in my world, we call that the gateway. So. So just think of the connection between you and Digicel or the connection between you and Flow at that point where the connection is made between your home network or your office network. Um, you'd really want to have some kind of a device there at that point in time that makes sure that everybody can't come in. You know, When you have a permanent connection to the internet, which is what we have these days, um, basically it's a, it's a two-way highway. And if you have nothing at the gateway that's preventing someone from coming in, it's like having a house with doors and, and no locks on it, which none of us would really do. So, or if you're making a burglar bar. Right. Well, well, I mean, even before the burglar bar, it would be like having a, having a door that just you, just you don't have a lock on it. You no just lock on that door. Up straight through, right? Um, and, and when you really, you know, I sit down with so many people, you know, friends and and they're showing me that how they can, you know, they can monitor, you know, their house from their phone. And, you know, like, so you have a firewall and they're like, no, I said, well, I wonder who else is monitoring your house from your from you know, so, <laughs> so, so this is our, it's, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, they, they put away the phone and they're not so excited anymore about what they're saying because, you know, they, they don't feel so smart. But, you know, we're not saying that to say that the people aren't smart. We're just saying that, you know, this is something that we want to bring to the fore that you want to be thinking about that. 
um, and making sure that you're you're protecting your your digital assets. Yes, and Jermaine and Jermaine is joining us all the way from Antigua. He's asking the question: How can you use technology to ensure workers aren't idling on the job? Yeah, you know, um, I think the biggest fear that everybody had, every CEO, every business owner had, was that if you weren't standing on top of your team, that they would all not do any work, right? Um, and so that's why they had to come into an office, and that's why you'd be able to need to see what they're doing and, and stuff like that. There is some software out there, you know, I've seen some software. We represent some software that, that when I look at it, I, you know, I almost call it the Antichrist. Um, that basically allows you to monitor what's going on on your users' machines and stuff like that. But I would say that's the wrong way to go. You should just basically have your business set up in such a way that people know what they need to do. You're managing by KPIs, and it becomes very clear um, whether or not an employee is delivering or not. You know, if, if, if they're in sales and there are no quotes done for the whole day, then what were they doing? You know, if, if or, or nothing has gotten sold. So I think, I think that, you know, we have to kind of get past that fear and the, the pandemic has forced us um, to get past that fear and a lot quicker than we would have otherwise. And the questions are coming in fast and furious. Lilith sure. Clo Bloomfield, hi Lilith. Lilith is asking, what is the benefit of creating a website rather than social media advertising? Well, I think they're both um, spokes in, in the same kind of hub. Um, you know, as it relates to our website, people that are doing research on things um, that tend to be older would more go to our website, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so people like me um, that are that are that are a little bit older, we would tend to, um, you know, be looking for things on a, on a website. So, for instance, in the last two days, I've had meetings some, with someone out of the UK and someone out of Turkey and Austria this morning. Um, that, that want to partner with us on a particular bid, and they found us based on the fact that we have our web presence, right? So, but so so it's 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 definitely very important to have a web presence, and um, for for the older folks, um, if your customer demographic is younger and you have more millennials, um, then basically the the, the whole um, social media would be very important because. To the younger generation, you know, they're not really going looking for a website. They're, if it doesn't exist on Instagram and it's not on their phone, it kind of doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and they will ultimately be the customers one day. So, you know, you kind of have to start to position yourself to, to, to take care of both, you know, the older mm -hmm. and the younger to make sure that your business will survive now and will thrive in the future. Okay. And um, I see Christopher Record commenting. He says, sadly, too many small and medium-sized businesses do not believe the IT security hacks will not happen to them. So this whole discussion on IT security has generated quite a bit of interest. And we have a question from Aman. If a firewall is a gateway, then a VPN is that extra bit of barbed wire. What is Mr. Abrams' opinion on VPNs? Well, the, what I would say is that the, um, the, the, the firewall would be the gateway that you would use um, to protect your, your network, whether it's a home network or um, your office network from people that you don't want to get into it. And then what the VPN does, I would more look on the VPN as a secure highway or a secret tunnel that comes into the network and it's encrypted. Um, and basically, you allow people or allow users to access your network in a, in a secure way. So, you know, the VPNs are a tried and proven technology, and it's a way that a lot of people still connect um, to networks today. Okay. And um, one of the things that, that, had, that jumped out at me is in the survey, the number of persons that responded to say, that YouTube is their main training ground. Um, and you know, you smile because you end up sometimes going on YouTube yourself to check things. All the time. All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> no, it, it, is, is YouTube, should YouTube, can you really build a technology strategy with YouTube being your main source of training or is that like your base source of training and you go up? But um, is that advisable to have YouTube as your training ground? 
Well, I think any way that you can get education, I think that's a good thing. Right? Yeah. So, um, you know, so I wouldn't tell somebody that you're going on YouTube to learn about a particular technology or about technology strategy, that, that's a bad thing. That's definitely a good thing. Would an individual lay person be able to go on, go on YouTube and come up with an appropriate technology strategy for themselves or for their business if it's a specialized area? Mm -hmm. Probably not. But that's why we're here. That's why we have all these technologies that are here that can help you to um, come up with that strategy, you know, and, and it's not a situation where, you know, it's very expensive. You'll find that a lot of the, the, the people that are in the industry for a long time, most of them will sit with you and you can have a conversation with them and they'll advise you and they'll say, well, this is the direction that you want to go in this way or that way. Um, you don't want to really get into paying for it now when you when you actually know get into a point where you know talking about writing a document and documenting it and stuff like that. But I would say that you know leverage your technology partners, um, and they really should be there to help you. They, they really shouldn't be there to scare you. Um, they shouldn't be there to make things look more difficult. If they really know what they're doing and they really know what they're about, um, then they should be able to explain it to you. And, um, and one of the things that I've learned over the years is that a lot of people feel that the non-technology people, that it's very hard for them to understand things, you know? When, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm going to work with a new individual or a new company, one of the things that I want to do is that I want to take a look at, like, at their offices, right? And if I go into their office and I notice that they're in whatever business that they're in and they, they have specialized equipment or, or tools for that business, then I know that that's somebody who understands how important tools are. Yeah. It's now my job as a technologist now to say to them, look, the same way that you have this particular tool, you need this particular tool to solve these problems using technology, right? So that would be my answer to that. I think that definitely YouTube and, and I would also recommend there are other platforms out there like you know, for the Microsoft suite of products, there's a great portal called Microsoft Learn. You can okay. just go on that. It's a free portal. Any mm -hmm. product that you're using, you can just basically search for it. And they have um, videos on there that basically show you how to use the various software that is out there. Um, and then also, you know, don't, don't underestimate the help functionality in a lot of the programs that we have. If you just type in help, um, a lot of times it will explain to you, um, you know, how you can do whatever it is that you need to do. Okay. But that, that, that'll be my answer to, to that. Yeah, thank you for that. And I'm seeing Sandra, Sandra Gray Hamilton ask, what kind of point of sale software do you recommend that is not too complicated but can manage the sales and stock accurately? Right, so I will just say that point of sale is not an area that I'm particularly strong in. It's not an area that Innovate plays in. But you, but but let's go back to what we started off talking about earlier today. You really want something that's appropriate for the purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, it's point a point of sale system can be as simple as a PC or a laptop or a tablet that um that basically access the internet accesses the internet and and you use some kind of a cloud service or it can be more specific where it's an actual purpose built um specific device that you use right with maybe a cash draw and stuff like that it really depends on the business it depends on the volume of transactions that you're doing it depends on whether you're doing cash transactions or not whether you're using credit cards so there are a lot of different questions, and so it, it, it really wouldn't be good for anyone to say, use this or use that without first understanding what the person is trying to achieve and what's and, and, and their reality. Yes, and I'm glad we're getting these questions because this just to remind you that March 5th, we will be having our Let's Go Digital Conference. It's an all-day conference, and we will have experts on these various areas. So this cannot be missed. So you're supposed to be registering right away to ensure that you are a part of this conference. Um, Akeem also jumped in on the training. Thank you, Akeem. And he says to also try, you, how is it pronounced? You, Demi? Are you familiar with it? No, I'm not, I'm not very familiar with it. No. It pop up on my screen and I make it go away. But right. apparently it is one of, the, um, one of the training sites and a lot of the training is offered for free. Okay. So, 
Yes. So Neil, you know, this has really been a very enlightening conversation. You've taken us through quite a bit of um, areas in technology, types of businesses. And um, I know, you know, as with doctors, you know, people will Google first and come to say that this is my diagnosis. This is a prescription that I need you to write for me. And with IT professionals, there's always this feeling that IT professionals are always talking over people's head and using some terms that we don't know about. Um, at what stage is it necessary for you to move from Googling what you need to actually going to an IT professional to get some further help? Well, I would say, you know, let's, 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 let's not make it so much focused on technology, right? Um, anything that you are doing in your business that you have access to an expert um, prevents you from having to make mistakes and learn um, the hard way, right? And you have to pay to learn. So I would say the earliest you can afford, or or and we 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 tend to have you know relationships with people that can help us. I would say I would say sooner than later, right? Yeah. And and if you're talking to someone and they're making you feel stupid and 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 they're stressing you out and they're making it harder, then that's just not the right person. You know, the person should really be there to be very patient with you and to explain to you why this behavior or why this thought process you have maybe isn't helping you achieve the objectives that you have set out to. So I would say the earliest that you can um, would probably be the, be the best, um, you know, but, but definitely if you are tech savvy um, and if you are someone that has through your various um, networks or your, your, your life experience, you have been able to like, maybe you worked in a bank or, or you worked, you know, in a company that had technology before, um, that's appropriate, then you would already have an idea what are some of the things, right? And then you can know, kind of say, well, I, I, you know, I, I kind of know that I, I need this and I need that because I used this when I was there. So a lot of times we have um, things that we can draw on, but, you know, we don't necessarily understand that we can draw on it. So, so I would say that, you know, be very practical um, and, and, and seek help. As, as early as you can. As early as you can. And before we wrap up with Neil, I see a question just coming in from King Sasha. Is there appointment scheduling software like Calendly that's readily available for SMEs? I'm not familiar with that piece of software, but there is software that is available for anything. Anything you want to do, there's a piece of software out there that, that, that somebody has written, multiple pieces of software. So I'm sure that there is um, software that's available to do exactly that. Um, I'd love to plug something before before we end. Um, and there is a- Please let our a, viewers know where to find you. Well, okay, well, I wasn't, I wasn't really plugging me, but, but um, before, before I do that, there is a document that a number of us worked on, right? Um, and it is, um, it is, I think it's gonna be a part of that whole digital conference that you're speaking about, right? Um, no, and it is, just just Neil, because that document, and let me let me just say where people can sign up for it right now, because that document is an extensive document, part of our SME memo this week. It's called um, if you email us right now at sme at psoj.org, um, you can be a part of our weekly mailing list, but you can also go to smallbusinessportal.com. That's smallbusinessportal.com to find this memo and many others. Yes, Neil, thank you for plugging. That All right, so that, that document was created by a number of people that have been in the industry for a long time, right? You know, decades. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very, very good document. It's very specific. It's what it does is that it basically looks at all aspects of technology for companies which are micro. So we're talking about one to five users, I think up to $5 million of revenue, small and then medium. So I think it goes all the way up to 50 users and $475 million in revenue. And so a lot of really very talented people that have a lot of experience put together actual specifications, the names of products, the brands, um, in some instances, there are um, there, 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 there are price points that are there, all the various things. And you could, if you, if you have that as a sheet, 
you could literally take that and look in your company or, and say, compare it to what you have and you'll be able to say, okay, uh, boy, I'm, 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 I'm ahead of the curve or I'm behind the curve. Um, or you could take that document to your technology provider and say, okay, here are the things that um, this document says that I need. Here's what I have. How do we get a plan together to get these things going? So I would really, really say to anybody that has a very specific question that they look at it. It's, it's such a good document that I have actually used that document internally. We're a hardcore technology company and I've given it to some of my sales reps. Um, I've given it to some of our consultants and I said, look, when you're talking to somebody so you don't have to come and ask us questions, um, you can use this as a guide. So I'd really, really say that, that, that I'd recommend that someone uses that as a tool. And um, the PSOJ has made this document available publicly. Again, email us at sme at psoj.org or visit smallbusinessportal.com. The first section of the memo just sets out some basic tips. And then the second section, you can have that as a little walk around with for your technology strategy. Right. But in addition, we have that conference coming up March 5th. And that conference, we're getting into the nitty gritty of many of these questions that our SMEs ask. But we are also having a virtual a virtual exhibition on March 6th, where you will be able to do virtual walkthroughs and meet with the different exhibitors, meet with the providers, ask your questions. Let me tell you, this cannot be beaten and you have to be a part of this. So thank you very much, Neil. And for our viewers who are wondering where they can make contact with you, they may want to use the services of your company, where can they find Neil Abrams and CEO, um, sorry, Innovative Corporate Solutions? Well, we're here in Jamaica. Um, you can find us on the web at www.innovative.com.jm. Um, and um, all our contact information is there. Um, and you can, you know, you can just call the office or send an email. Um, and no one screens calls, so anyone can speak to me, no problem, or any other member of our team. Um, and we'd definitely be happy to help you. Um, we have been able to help many companies mm -hmm. over the years, um, and you know, you know, as we, as you grow, we grow, you know, and, and that's really what we want to do. Okay, thank you so much, Neil. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And Chris Record says, "Fantastic job, Neil. Great as advice as always. Thank you All very much." Big up, Chris. Respect. <laughs> All right. And, and happy new year again. So our viewers, I see Kevin Fairman asking, how do we sign up for the conference? Well, registration details will be available on our Facebook and Instagram pages. So please subscribe right now, follow us because we'll be providing the information over the next few weeks for registration, the links for registration. This conference cannot be missed. Please ensure that you also share this information with your other SMEs because the more of us doing business well, the more of us are going to come out stronger on the other side of COVID. I see lots of, of great commentary coming in for Neil Abrams earlier. We had um, Raquel Civil, who is CEO of BI Brains Caribbean. If you joined us late and you missed the survey that, that Raquel presented, Please, this episode will be available as all or 37 other episodes on smallbusinessportal.com, also right here on our Facebook page. So please ensure that you go, you like, you share, and please send in your comments and questions. We respond within 24 hours and we'll point you to the experts. So March 5th. 2020 let's go digital conference over the coming weeks we will be having technology specific covid cast because we're walking you and your business through all that you need for technology and it culminates in this huge conference which will be educational informative the experts will be at your fingertips the providers the suppliers the vendors hardware so and software vendors will be answering questions on cyber security we'll be looking at things like the firewalls that we talked about we'll be walking you through the type of technology you will need for your business to be digitally transformed because we are all digitizing for 2021. So we look forward 
to your registration again. Follow us on Instagram at PSOJ Financial Access JA. Follow us right now and ensure that you like us and are following us right here on Facebook. And smallbusinessportal.com must be something that pops up all the time in your search engine. You can find all our previous memos all our previous episodes and information also on registration will be available. So we look forward to the next few weeks really delving into digitization and technology and raising our businesses to another level. So viewers, thank you again for joining us for another live episode of COVID Cast JA. And we will see you again next week, Thursday at what time? 7.30 p.m. right here. What good? So you have a great idea to start a business, but you don't know where to start. We completely understand. You have a lot of questions and almost no answers. Smallbusinessportal.com is here to help. At smallbusinessportal.com, you gain access to information on loans, grants, and investment opportunities from verified financial institutions. Guess what you also get? Useful business tips, access to training, all these services combine to make your business idea into a reality. Start your journey today at smallbusinessportal.com.